I've been really into Gravity Sketch, and I think it's super powerful, but I haven't seen a lot of tutorials on how to use it. So I'm going to show uh, some ways to use it, um, and I want to do a three-part series to show how to make a car using Gravity Sketch, because that's what I've been doing lately. Um, and also, I'm going to take some time to try to show some of the specific features that might be hard to discover and the ways that I've figured out how to work that have worked best for me. Um, so we'll get started working on the reference lines for, for this car. First thing I always do is grab reference. I go ahead and do this 2016 R8. These are nice images, super clear, really easy to, to follow. Definitely want to have a good range of images in addition to your blueprint. And I'm going to open up a landing pad. Landing pad is Gravity Sketch's cloud-based service, so you can drag an image in here and it'll show up in VR. Just drag them right into that folder. And now we can head into VR. I got the car that I was working on last time. Um, you can see the reference images here. This is a Vector W8, really wild car. Um, I didn't use any orthographic images for this one. Uh, I just kind of eyeballed it. For the tutorial today, I want to use a blueprint so we can have some confidence inspiring, very uh, consistent and accurate choices made because it can be a little intimidating to make a car design without working off of, directly off of a blueprint. So the very first thing I do in a new scene um, is I try to establish where we are. So if that's an up arrow, um, when I first land in here and then I start working and grabbing and rotating, um, I'm not really sure where up is anymore um, relative to the ground floor in, in world space. Um, so you, it's really easy to lose track of, of what's up and, and where things are. To have them solidly be in line with, with an axis that you'd expect. If you're coming from a 3D program, uh, you'd, you'd normally expect to have an X, Y, and Z axis. And, um, and so that's in here, but that's not, it's not relative to the world space, it's actually relative to the object. So um, if I turn on mirror, then that kind of shows me where that x-axis is. And if I turn on the stage floor, um, which will be round, that's, that's where the floor is. So you can see I'm already upside down here. So I'm going to grab this and rotate it back over. So I'm on the area that I want to be, and I can understand where the floor is. So I'm going to go into Reference Images, open my Cloud Reference, um, head into that R8 folder that we made, and you can see those images populating in. And then I want to grab this um, Blueprint image, and I want to line it up with this plane as closely as I can. If I grab the scene and rotate the scene, it's going to move away from this, and I'll have to line it up again. So just to show that, it's it's stuck to the world, it's not stuck to the object. So if I grab this scene again and then put it back where it's supposed to be, see that anchor that's showing up when I highlight over the object? If I grab the object and I press this uh, blue button, the top button here on the left hand, then it'll anchor in. And uh, it even snapped, I think, automatically to that center. First, let's go into transparency. So we have layers. I'm going to go to my layers here. I'm going to move this over here. So the same way that you would delete objects in, in the world, which is by grabbing them and hold, pressing that button, is, is how you would get rid of menu items. Um, similarly, if you want to um, create, uh, like to add something to, to a layer, like let's say the stroke, which is now on layer two, um, you grab it and you just put it in, in the layer. And um, that's one, another one that I just kind of discovered. Um, organically just by trying it. First I'll do layer one to be images and you can grab this keyboard um, by grabbing this this little side edge and put it somewhere more comfortable and even scale it up and down within some constraints and we'll call this layer um, lines. I, I grabbed this UI um, and, I, and I placed it in the world. You can place any of these panels in the world as long as it has an outline and then we'll make a new layer and we'll call, and we can reorder these by grabbing and moving it 
and we'll call these uh, images O for opaque. So we've got our fully opaque images and our transparent images. So I'm going to drag these out again, place them into the scene. Um, and this one and this one are facing the wrong direction. So you can just turn it and look at the back side of it rather than flipping that image somewhere else. So that's super helpful as well for this. I think this is my favorite image to work off of. So I'm going to put that here. I don't need this stage floor now that I have established where it should be. Um, so I'm going to turn that off. I duplicate it. I'm going to rotate it. And OK, so if you just if you just rotate it and keep it consistent with the plane, it'll snap to that plane. But my image is offset, so um, since it's offset, I'm going to need to move the the um, the image in, in the x axis. So that's going to be one of the first tricks. Um, you'll find this in the gravity sketch reference, but I still thought it was difficult to understand how to do it, so I'm going to explain it again. If you want to move something down the x-axis, um, hold your controller up over the object, and it has to be hovering on the object um, with that uh, selector that's over the palm. And once you're hovering over, as you approach the, the left controller to the right controller, you'll see an axis pop up. And if you line them up like you're pointing this one forward and this one's behind it on the same vector, it's almost like you're holding a spear. Uh, then you'll see this, this red line pop up. And, and then once you grab it with your right trigger and move it, it'll only move along the axes. OK, so with these in place, um, we can do that once more for the front view. So I'm going to duplicate this. And then we're going to rotate that and see if it snaps. And it does, which is killer. So with it snapped, I'm going to use the axes move. Come down here. And we can use the side lines to line it up. So I'm going to make my lines black, which will you'll notice it creates a new texture when I, when I draw a stroke. So I can come back to this later. And then each of these image textures, they can also be used as a stroke texture. So if I'm drawing, it'll, it'll take whatever image you've imported into the scene and try to create a stroke out of it. So you could use that for texture um, if, you're, if you have something that needs to be organic or needs texture. But since we're working with car paint, I, I typically don't mess with that. Um, I'm holding down that bottom button to pull up this color menu with a 3D color picker. And so we can start to sketch out the silhouette of the car. Um, I'm just doing big sweeping lines. Um, and I'm not too worried about the accuracy, which I'm going to say that a lot, because it's, it's really not that important um, at this stage. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock the layers that I'm not using. So then I can grab this and I can duplicate it down to give me that other line. Um, and then I'm going to do a lot of duplication. So um, remember, these are mirrored on the other side. So there's going to be um, a little bit of noise to the way that it looks. But we're going to pull them out later. OK, so we have a silhouette here from the front. And we can turn off the transparent images layer to look at it. And it's looking pretty nice. We can grab these uh, lines and we can start to move them into, into space in that axis move that I was talking about. Let's pull it back. And now what we'd be doing here is we'd be pulling it back based on the top view. Now you can see you can't see the actual wheelbase and like where it would be in top mode, but you can guess that that fender would be all, all the way out. And this needs to connect to the fender, so it would be around there. And based on that top view, I'm just guessing um, about how far out each of these things would go. Um, I'm actually going to use these lines mostly for reference and not for the final 
geometry. So now if we turn our transparent images off, this is our orthographic reference. Um, and uh, we're not, it's not perfect, um, but this is, this is kind of an exploded um, view of, of the orthographic. And, and I've been told before that you can't do orthographic in VR, but here we are doing it. So I'm going to go to this um, transparent view. And it's starting to get confusing to look at. So I'm going to call it lines side. Then I'm going to make a new layer here. And I'm going to call it lines front. I'm coming to this front view and it's going to be mirrored and the mirror will be much more obvious in this case and uh, again I'm just going to draw some lines and landmarks based on that view right on top of it. Okay now I can turn my images from the side, my lines from the side back on and so I'm going to grab this and just move it to where the seat is. You can see where you messed up and start to make it more accurate. And you can see this is much more squared off than the reference. And so we'll, we'll go into the top view to decide how that's going to curve around. Turn our images transparency back on and then base it off of that. So rather than just um, moving it, rotating it, if I were to rotate this, it would be too small. So um, what I'll do instead is I'll, I'll, I'll move it along the axis like this. And so I'm kind of bending the line in a weird way, but that's OK, because it's a reference. So I'll just do that with all the lines here. I'll bring them into edit mode, bend them to the top view. This hood line here actually angles out all the way out here. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to get that in there. OK, now I'm just going to move these seats over. So they make a little more sense with the front view. I can delete these. And I'll just duplicate this top part of the seat, which is our landmark, really, for understanding where the seat goes, and just push it back. Bring these bolsters over. And that'll feel more solid on the inside of the car. And I want to make sure I know how wide the tires should be, so I'm going to mark that and then drag those back. How we apply this to the back, make my brush a little smaller. Now we can turn off our reference, and we have a 3D reference. So this is a great way to bring orthographic view into, into 3D if you're working on more of a concept sketch. And these landmarks could be done with total accuracy. Um, but I, you know, I just did a quick pass on the whole thing. You can take these and scale them up, see what it would look like in real world size. You could get into the driver's seat and have a look around you know, pretend you're driving. Uh, you get the benefits of the gestural aspect of drawing, but then the dimension of 3D and the scale and the feeling of presence in VR. So in the next episode, we're going to take the uh, lines here and turn them into surfaces, and we're going to get into subdivision surfaces and how to use those. So thanks for checking this out.